So let's start with part one. When can an individual under age 65 get Medicare? So we'll look at the general rule with an example. And then we'll go through six exceptions to the general rule. Three of those exceptions allow more people under age 65 to get Medicare. Those are disabled widows or widowers, people with end-stage renal disease, and some government employees. There are also three exceptions that I'll discuss today that allow people under age 65 to get Medicare more quickly. Previously disabled, uh, people with end-stage renal disease, and people with uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. So let's look at the general rule of when an individual under the age 65 can get Medicare. In the vast majority of cases, an individual has been determined under either the Social Security or the Railroad Retirement Acts to meet the criteria for the program, so Social Security Disability Insurance or Railroad Disability Benefits, based on their own work record. And an and an individual has fulfilled a 29-month waiting period, uh, which does not include a partial month, that uh, begins from the date that Social Security has determined the onset of the disability. So here is an example of the general rule. Mr. Hall applies for Social Security Disability Insurance, and Social Security determines that the onset date of his disability Onset being defined as the date he became unable to perform regular and continuous work activity to be June 10th of 2014. Mr. Hall's waiting period for benefit entitlement when he will start getting paid by Social Security is five months after the first of the month in which he was found to be disabled. So from June 10th, we roll forward the five months, July, August, September, October, and November to December 1st, 2014. Then we have to also add Mr. Hall's waiting period for Medicare, which is an additional 24 months from December 1st of 2014. Therefore, his Medicare eligibility begins on December 1st of 2016. So it's just over 29 months in his case. Then I want to look at the three exceptions to the general rule, those that allow more individuals under age 65 to be eligible for Medicare. We are broadening the eligibility in this section, and we'll explore eligibility for disabled widows and widowers, individuals with end-stage renal disease, and government workers who are not insured for Social Security disability insurance. Disabled widows and widowers must attain age 50. Um, this is an odd thing in the session. I shouldn't say odd because I think there's a lot of people from Social Security on the phone. But um, to be disabled for disabled widows benefits under Social Security, a widow or widower must have attained age 50 but not have attained age 60. But for Medicare purposes, um, he or she may file a disabled widow or widower benefit claim for the entire um, for the Medicare period for in Medicare entitlement purposes only, um, and he must he or she must prove the relationship to the deceased insured worker, and must prove disability under the Act as do um, the people under the general rule. Next, let's let's look at individuals with end stage renal disease. So individuals of any age with end-stage renal disease, uh, we are often asked if children can ever qualify for Medicare. And yes, um, under end-stage renal disease, also known as permanent kidney failure, children may qualify for Medicare. Um, if those individuals receive a kidney transplant or receive dialysis on a regular basis, and if they apply for Part A and are deemed enrolled in Part B unless they refuse coverage, they must meet one of three criteria. They are insured under one of the acts, either Social Security or Railroad Retirement. They are already entitled to monthly Social Security or Railroad Annuity. Um, that could, could also be um, Social Security Retirement. 
and they are a spouse or a dependent child of an insured or eligible person. Eligibility usually begins after a three-month waiting period. Um, let's look at an example of this. So Mrs. Wall begins regular dialysis on April 20th. Medicare coverage, remember there's typically a three-month waiting period. Um, in her case would be the full months of May, June, and July. So her coverage would typically begin on August 1st. But note that if Mrs. Wall receives a transplant or she participates in a self-dialysis training program during her waiting period, her entire three-month qualifying period or waiting period will be waived, and her Medicare coverage instead would begin on May 1st. So there are some government workers who are not insured for Social Security, um, either through the disability insurance program or they do not pay Social Security taxes. Uh, there are some public employees, such as teach some teachers and firefighters and other municipal employees, who only pay Medicare taxes and not Social Security taxes. But once an individual has earned 40 Medicare quarters of coverage, he or she could be eligible for premium-free Medicare Part A. Um, this is no different than others who pay both Social Security and Medicare taxes. Next, I want to talk about the um, three exceptions to the general rule where individuals have a shorter waiting period in order to get Medicare. So in this section, We'll look at individuals who have previously been found to be disabled sometime in their life. Um, look at individuals with end-stage renal disease and uh, individuals with ALS to see if their waiting periods are shorter. So individuals who have been previously found to be disabled. Um, months of a previous entitlement to disability benefits may count toward the 24-month Medicare waiting period if there is a prior period of entitlement for Medicare by an individual on his or her, her own work record that ended no more than five years or 60 months before the month of the current onset, or a prior period of disabled widow or widower benefits or child disability benefits eligibility that ended no more than seven years before the month of the current onset, or the current disabling impairment is the same as or directly related to the impairment which originally served as the basis of the previous disability. Um, and there is no limit on the look back period for those who qualify because of the same disabling impairment. Um, note that a person does not have to be eligible for the same type of disability benefit for these rules to apply. For example, an individual who had disabled widow's benefits then went back to work, um, say, for six years, and then became eligible for Social Security Disability Insurance, a different benefit than the widow's benefit. She could count the months that she had already satisfied under the disabled widow's claim toward her Medicare waiting period. People with end-stage renal disease and people with ALS. So under the end, for end-stage end -stage renal disease, um, Medicare usually begins after a three-month waiting period um, with several exceptions. Again, we already um, had, had talked about this. If there's a transplant or a participation in a self-dialysis training program during the waiting period, this actually triggers satisfaction of the three-month waiting period. Under ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, Medicare begins with entitlement to Social Security Disability Insurance, again, which requires a five-month waiting period from the disability onset date, but they do not have to satisfy, um, patients with ALS do not have to satisfy the 24-month waiting period for Medicare.